Hi everyone, my name is Kang from the TensorFlow team, and today I'll introduce you to a new field in machine learning called on-device machine learning. I'll show you how you can start using it in your applications in just a few lines of code. When talking about machine learning, many people may have an impression that machine learning models run on server-side using powerful GPUs or powerful TPUs. However, edge devices like smartphones or IoT devices have become a very important platform for machine learning in recent years. On-device machine learning refers to a subfield of machine learning that trains and deploy machine learning models on those edge devices. But why is it important to run machine learning on edge devices? There are several reasons. The first one is latency. If you want to build a feature that requires real-time data processing, like processing video feed, then you definitely need to run the machine learning models on the devices. The second reason is offline availability. You can use the feature even when there's no internet connection. And the third reason is protecting user privacy. With the on-device machine learning, you don't need to send sensitive user data to the server for processing. And thanks to on-device machine learning, a lot of new features have become possible. Let me show you some examples. The first example is the virtual try-on feature on YouTube. In this demo, you can see that the user can try different lipstick colors using augmented reality in the app. This feature is powered by an on-device machine learning model that recognizes the user lips in real time and changes the colors. Another example is the Google Translate app. It has a feature that allows you to capture text with your phone camera and translate them in real time without internet connection. Besides smartphone apps, on-device machine learning is also being used in many IoT devices. For example, this cleaning robot from Ecovax uses on-device machine learning to take obstacles on the floor so that it can clean the floor without getting stuck because of those items. We use TensorFlow to train and deploy machine learning models. However, TensorFlow was originally built to run on servers with a lot of computing power and memory. Most edge devices have a lot of power constraints that we didn't consider them when we started building TensorFlow. That's why we built TensorFlow Lite from scratch to be a machine learning framework specifically for deploying TensorFlow models on edge devices. TensorFlow Lite supports many different platforms, including Android and iOS smartphones, Linux-based IoT devices like the Raspberry Pi, microcontrollers, and even web browsers. Today, I'll show you how to build on-device machine learning applications using TensorFlow Lite. We'll cover three scenarios. First, I'll show you how to use a pre-trained TensorFlow Lite model to add on-device machine learning to your applications in just a few minutes. Second, I'll show you how to train a custom TensorFlow Lite model to implement machine learning use cases that are not supported out of the box by the pre-trained models. And finally, I'll show you how to convert TensorFlow models to TensorFlow Lite so that you can have the full power to customize your model. The first scenario is very easy, but it only offers very few options for customization. On the other hand, the third scenario offers a lot of flexibility for customization, but it requires expertise in building machine learning models. Now let's start with the first option, using pre-trained TensorFlow Lite models. Pre-trained models are machine learning models that are already trained to do a specific task. For example, there's a pre-trained object detection model called Action Dead Light. This model can recognize 70 types of different objects like dog, cat, keyboard, television, and many more. The model takes an image as the input and then returns a list of objects that it recognizes together with the location of the objects in the image. For example, the model can tell that there's a dog and a cat in this image and where they are. Let me give you another example. There's a pre-trained audio classification model called YAMNET. YAMNET can recognize 521 different types of sound, such as music, speech, vehicle, can mewing, and many more. TensorFlow Lite has a collection of sample applications that implement many different on-device machine learning use cases. You can find the sample apps for the two use cases that I just mentioned earlier, 
object detection and audio classification, as well as many other use cases like image classification or post estimation. There are sample apps for Android, iOS, and Raspberry Pi. You can clone the sample apps from GitHub and try them out. Here's a demo of the object detection Android sample app. It is a pre-trained Action Index light model to detect different types of objects. You can see that it can recognize the keyboard, the mouse, my laptop, or a water bottle. Here's another demo. This is the audio classification sample app running on a Raspberry Pi. You can see that it recognizes speech as I'm speaking. Now let's try some music. And what about some cat mewing? One important thing to take note here is that the machine learning models that I just show you run in real time and entirely on the local device. It means that the models run without any internet connection and no user data is sent to the cloud for processing. That's the power of on-device machine learning. Now, let me show you how you can integrate those machine learning models into your own application. First, you will need to download the pre-trained TensorFlow Lite model. There are many pre-trained TensorFlow models on TensorFlow Hub that you can choose from. For those who don't know, TensorFlow Hub is a free repository for TensorFlow pre-trained models. You can find models for many different machine learning use cases which are created by both Google and the TensorFlow community. Here's the Action Dead Light Zero TensorFlow Lite model that is used in the object detection sample app that I showed you earlier. You can download it and proceed to integrate that into your app. Once you have downloaded your model, you can use TensorFlow Lite task library to integrate the model into your apps. First, you need to add the TensorFlow Lite task library to your application. There are Android, iOS and Python libraries that you can choose from depending on your targeted platform. Next, let me show you how to integrate the object detection model to your Python application using the task library Python API. In your Python application, start by importing the vision module from the task library. Then initialize an object detector with the TensorFlow Lite model that you just downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. Now you need to prepare a tensor image to fit the input image to the object detector. You can load the image directly from a file using the create from file function, and then call the detect function on the tensor image to detect objects in that image. The detect function returns a list of detection objects, each representing an object that it found from the image. In each detection object, there's the object name, the confidence score, and the bounding box indicating the object location. And it's that simple. In just five lines of code, your Python application can now detect 70 different types of objects. TensorFlow Lite supports many different platforms, including Android and iOS smartphones. Integrating a TensorFlow Lite pre trained model to a smartphone application is just as easy as what I show you with the Python application. For example, here's the Kotlin code that you need to write to integrate the TensorFlow Lite object detection model into an Android app. You start by creating an object detector with the TensorFlow Lite model that you downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. Then you create a tensor image object from the Android bitmap object that contains the image that you want to recognize. And finally, you call the detect function on the tensor image and get back the list of detected objects similarly to what you get from the Python API. Now we have seen how easy it is to add machine learning models to your app using a pre-trained TensorFlow Lite model. However, there are many times that you may want to do something that is not supported by the pre-trained models, so that's when you need to train a custom model. Let me give you an example. The pre-trained object detection model that we downloaded from TensorFlow Hub can recognize 70 different types of objects, but it can't recognize the Android figurines that I have. So if I want to build an app to recognize these Android figurines, then I will need to train a custom model. So let me show you how to do that. 
There are three steps to do so. First, collect and label the training data. Then train a custom object detection model using TensorFlow-Lite Model Maker. And finally, deploy the model by replacing the models that you downloaded from TensorFlow Hub with a new custom model. You start with taking a lot of photos containing the objects that you want to detect. You can start with a dozen images for each type of object and train a prototype model. But to get a production quality model, you should aim for having more than 100 images for each type of object. Then use an image labeling tool to label the object that you want to detect in the image. I prefer a tool called Label IMG. It's an open source tool that you can download from GitHub. You can find the link to download the app in the video description. Once you have finished labeling your images, it can export the label data to start training the model. To train a machine learning model, you will need a powerful computer. My recommendation is to use Google Colab, which is a web-based tool to run Python programs. It offers free CPUs so that it can train custom machine learning models faster. Of course, if you want, you can also use your laptop or desktop to train models. Please note that although you need a powerful computer to train custom machine learning models, you can still deploy the train model to edge devices which have limited computing power like a smartphone or Raspberry Pi. You start by installing Model Maker on Google Colab on your computer using pip. Just run pip install tflight model maker. And next is the Python code to train a custom model using Model Maker. You start with choosing the model spec or model architecture for your custom model. Here we use FCNet Lite 0, the same architecture with the pre trained model that we downloaded from TensorFlow Hub earlier. Then you load your data set using the object detector data loader. Then you start training your model. And after training the model, we use a test data set which the model hasn't seen before to evaluate the model accuracy. And finally, I export the model to deploy on edge devices. Now, as we have finished training the custom model, let's switch to the Android app to deploy it. Deploying the custom model is very easy. You can reuse the code in the demo app and just replace the pre-trained model with your custom model. Here's the custom model in action. You can see that it now detects the Android figurines rather than the general objects like the mouse. It's very easy, isn't it? You can also use Model Maker to train many other types of custom models, such as image classification, audio classification, or text classification models. If you want to learn more about using Model Maker, please check out the tutorials on the TensorFlow-Lite website. You can find the URLs in the video description. Model Maker is a very easy to use tool to train custom on-device machine learning models, but it only supports a specific set of popular machine learning use cases and model architecture. If you want to implement an on-device machine learning use case that is not supported by Model Maker, you can build and train your custom model using TensorFlow. Then convert it to TensorFlow Lite to deploy on edge devices. I'll show you how to do that. There are three steps that you need to take. First, you start with building and training your model using TensorFlow. Then you convert the model to the TensorFlow Lite format. And finally, you deploy and run the model on the edge devices using TensorFlow Lite runtime. The first step, training a TensorFlow model is the same as how we have been using TensorFlow. You start with uh, defining the model using the Keras API and start training the model. If you are a TensorFlow user, then it's the same thing as what you have been doing so far. The next step is to convert the TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite. You can use the TFLite converter class to convert your Keras model to the TensorFlow Lite format, and then save the model as a file so that you can deploy it on edge devices later. To optimize your model for deployment on edge devices, you can apply quantization when converting the model. Quantization means to reduce the number of bytes used to represent the model weights, for example, from 32 bit to 8 bit. And here's a benchmark of applying quantization on some popular computer vision models. These models become four times smaller at a loss of about 1% point in accuracy. Quantized models also run faster. 
For example, on a Raspberry Pi 4, a MobileNet V1 quantized model runs about two times faster than its original version. You can add quantization when converting your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite by adding this one line of code. Okay, now we have converted your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite. The final step is to deploy the model on your device. You will need to add the TensorFlow Lite runtime to your application. This library is different from the task library that I showed you earlier. There are Android, iOS, and Python libraries that you can choose from. And here's the Python code to run a TensorFlow Lite model. It's similar to how you use a TensorFlow Lite model with task library, but the main difference here is that TensorFlow Lite runtime requires the model inputs and outputs to be number arrays rather than the high level data types as in the case of task library. So that means you will have to write all the pre processing and post processing code by yourself. For example, Converting from image object to a float array representing the image in the RGB format. You also need to specify which tensor is the input and the output of the model. I'm showing you the Python API, but the Android and the iOS APIs are very similar. So that was all the content for today. Let's recap what we have talked about. First, you can get started with all device machine learning by downloading the uh, pre-trained TensorFlow Lite models from TensorFlow Hub and integrate them into your app in just a few lines of code by using TensorFlow Lite task library. Then I'll show you how to quickly train a custom TensorFlow Lite model by using Model Maker. And finally, we talk about using TensorFlow Lite Converter to convert your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite and how to use the TensorFlow Lite runtime to deploy it on Edge devices. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the TensorFlow YouTube channel to learn more about machine learning at Google.